takes a lot of guts as a car company to bring out a car that's quite radical and then follow it up with a car that looks nothing like it. In fact, you don't even know if it's a better car, worse car, more expensive or not. But that's what Hyundai or Hyundai have done. The Ionic 5 came out. It's amazing. It's loved by thousands of people, myself included. And this is based upon that. But the Ionic 6 looks nothing like it whatsoever. And it's not a more expensive car. Same price, aimed at possibly the same type of person. Who knows? We'll see. But I've waited until now to drive it here in Britain in right-hand drive, finished form. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. This episode is proudly supported by blackcircles.com, Britain's largest online tire retailer, providing a comprehensive click and fit service. You can put your registration number in and you can get a whole different selection of different types of grades of tires suitable for your car. Everything from eco-specific tires for electric vehicles like this, or performance tires for sports cars. And with over 2,000 tyre fitting partners, Black Circles will have one conveniently located near you. Isn't it Ionic, don't you think? Yes, because that's what it is. The Ionic 6 has an awful lot of familiarity in it. It's not exactly the same as the Ionic 5, but there is loads of DNA. I mean, for example, this steering wheel is Ionic 5. The one difference being that the four pixels in the middle on the horn push are illuminated. And that's to give you the state of charge, but it also changes colour with the drive mode. So if you put it in sport mode, I think it gets all a bit aggro and red and grrr. So it's a, it's a quick reference for state of charge. And it's a stylish feature. You still get your little uh, drive knob down here on the right. Looks like a giant cruise control stalk. Uh, and I still don't like the way it feels. It feels a little bit plasticky for me, but it's okay. And the other difference is, which is weird, is these sets of controls have been switched from the Ionic 5 to the 6. So you've now got your volume on the other side and your cruise control on the other side, I think. So goodness knows why. And because Kia and Hyundai know that some people want to be able to control their cars and adjust their region easily without going into a boring menu, there's these real metal paddles. Yeah. And there's three stages of regen. So underneath this car, it is an Ionic 5. I mean, it's the same suspension, McPherson strut front, multi-link rear. It's the same eGMP, eGIMP uh, platform, the one that's shared with the Ionic 5, the one that's shared with the EV6, blah de blah de blah So it's, it's odd, isn't it? Because when you see them parked next to one another, they do not look related at all. And that's a really bold move by Hyundai because the Ionic 5 has been a runaway success and so many other manufacturers like the sort of Mercedes, Audis of the world, they would just build another car that looks kind of the same but slightly bigger or slightly smaller. Not on Hyundai's watch, oh no. Before I continue, I am gonna just make it clear, I'm not doing a detailed external design walk around of the Ionic 6 today, because I've already done it. When I first saw this car, I did a separate video about it, and I'll put it above my head right now. A lot of people are asking me, well, Johnny, how does this compare in size dimensions to its brother, the Ionic 5? Well, let me show you. It looks like this when you park it next to an Ionic 5. So there, they look completely different, but yet they are related underneath here. So the drivetrain is the same. You know, the voltage, 800 volt um, and battery system is all the same, but yet clothed totally differently. This has swapped the slab sides. 
for slippery streamliner aero. And this finished car, it's interesting to me to look at it now out in the open, out in Britain. There's so many strange different design cues here, aren't there? The back end reminds me of, of, of Audi A6 a little bit, which I didn't like when I first saw the Audi A6. The roof line, CLS Mercedes, the first gen one, which I thought was a fantastic car. I love the Merc CLS. This is not a really fussy, the only fussy part of the design, I think, is the back end. And I'm not saying fussy in a bad way, I think it's fascinating, but there's a lot going on at the back end. Let's have a look at the back. You've got the pixelations uh, as part of the design, which runs through both this and the Ionic 5. But look what we got here, blatant kind of lifts from Porsche, which I love. You've got a kind of a whale tail here, which has got a light bar integral to it, and it's, and it's corrugated. So that's sort of 80s Porsche. There's almost a bit of 70s 911 RS down here with a little duck tail. And then I feel 993 911 with these sort of pixelated thin bar, which goes across there. All very cool to me. And it's, it doesn't look any worse uh, with age. I think it's still exciting. And then you've got almost bumper overriders, these parts here, which I think look bad in pictures, but in reality, I'm okay with them. I think they look pretty good. What do you think? It is a strange looking car, but it's distinctive. And I'm down with that. So in the UK, Hyundai at the moment is only gonna be bringing in the larger battery version, 77.4 kilowatt hour, this. But you can still choose rear wheel drive, single motor, which this is, this particular version, or all wheel drive, twin motor. That difference is 228 PS, this car, or 325 PS, the other car, with a huge amount more torque in the dual motor car, like 605 newton meters versus 350. Difference is 5.1 seconds to 60 versus about seven to 60. If you've seen me driving uh, the EV6 before, then you'll know it's a fantastic car in so many different ways. Um, if you haven't seen my recent road trip in the EV6 GT, which is the fast one, I'll put a link above my head now. But what we do know from Hyundai, Kia's sister company, is that they are gonna do a hot version of this and they are going to do a hot version of the Ionic 5. They're gonna do an N series, which is their kind of hardcore line of vehicles. That's gonna be interesting. I can tell you within a few miles of driving the six, it's a firmer ride and I, I, well, I'm not gonna say hard ride because it's not hard, it's not crashy, but it's definitely firmer than the Ionic 5. And the Ionic 5 is more of a kind of a, a, a cushy, chilled out, not performance uh, chassis setting. And that works for 90% of people 90% of the time. Now those Bings are, I believe, a new mandatory feature, which I wasn't aware of, which tells you when you're coming into a different speed limit. It comes up with the speed on the dash. Didn't know that until today. I thought, it, I thought I'd left my belt off, but I haven't, because I'm sensible. Oh, and one more thing. At the time of this edit, the Ionic 6's Euro NCAP safety results had come in, and it was awarded best in class for a large family car. Five star rating. Perfect excuse then to see some being crashed, but not by me, no. Cue poetic car destruction montage. So there's familiar colour schemes to the Ionic 5, these sort of beiges and greys going on, and there's a lot of other shared componentry. So for example, the steering wheel is the same as an Ionic 5. But look at this door, these, these door arms. The, uh, the handle is the full length of the car. It's this beautifully cut in huge um, Bose speaker system. So the, the top of the range models get the, the Bose uh, audio system. and You've got mood lights top and bottom, and of course, translucent plastic door, door bins on the sides of the doors and in the middle of the console here. 
you sit a lot lower in the Ionic 6 because it's a you know it's a lower slow more arrow shaped car so as a result the Ionic 5 has a floating kind of center console which finishes about here and then a flat floor this doesn't it's a little bit more conventional and it's got the the higher full length console a bit like a um, Porsche Panamera or a, a Taycan or something like that in the middle here you've got um, wireless charging one USB two USB C's two back there and then you've got the plug we'll come on to the back in a sec the dash is less sort of linear than the Ionic 5 it's got these lovely wings which come up at the side sort of like a like an aeroplane at the end of the wing tips they flick up this car's got the standard wing mirrors but you can option it with the cameras alternatives which are great because they're kind of they got see-through uh, plastic uh, covers on them and they they got the pixelated design very very cool and they fold in when you lock and unlock which I'll show you however I'm still not convinced that the future is is cameras instead of mirrors when they're the amount of aero gain is so negligible yet the cost will be so high to not only option it but also if someone comes and kicks them off or just smashes them off accidentally in a in a, in a car park yeah the other thing is i'm sure these seats are ever so slightly more figure hugging than the ionic 5 maybe slightly more sporty and supportive on the sides it's got like a rainbow kind of um, stitched material insert i don't know what material is but what i do know is that the ionic 6 uses more recycled materials than the ionic 5 and there's some crazy stuff going on in here like this this sort of rough finish ordinarily i wouldn't like it very much but it reminds me of those sort of high-end kitchen worktops and then this is like a waxed fabric and it totally reminds me <laughs> of my mum's tablecloth that she used to put on the dining table when me and my brother were going to do arts and crafts with glue and paint and other dirty stuff it's like that but i'm saying this in a complimentary way because i think it works it just works two cup holders deep storage there another bit of storage there which is just sort of scratchy plastic that's rubberized that's not I think the quality here sort of varies really and this car's not finished 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 but it's near as damn it finished so you've got the familiar infotainment two times 12 inch screens very similar if not the same as the ionic 5 this time with the sort of brushed aluminium effect surround they it sits nicely i really like the way stuff is displayed because it's sort of subtle colorations it's quite relaxing but not only that you still have the physical buttons down here for the all important stuff and then this here can flip between climate and other stuff at a touch of a button you, you start the car up just here we switch it on and it, it just like the ionic 5 it has a tray a glove tray a tray box instead of a, a, a drop down it's a pull out like a filing cabinet which is slightly more useful I love the fact I've just noticed on the passenger side as well you can move the passenger seat forwards and backwards with controls on the side so that people in the back can do that and that is because I think they use a lot of these as taxis well not sixes but certainly the fives are used a lot as taxis they're very practical two important other things that the Ionic 6 has as standard a heat pump the Ionic 5 it's still I believe an option and it's an important option to tick at least in the UK and secondly as standard now well the 6 does and I think the 5 does is it pre conditions the battery it pre heats the battery if the sat nav is set to a certain destination charger um, the EV6 GT does do that the new version as well price wise then this thing starts at 46,000 pounds and then the uh, first edition is about £54,000 and that's you know the earliest car for the early adopters as it were and the ultimate edition which has you know the all-wheel drive ultimate is about 53 so once the kind of the run out first editions have gone that's what you're looking at I'm slowing down because that person has a Rover P5B on their drive and a Peugeot 205 GTI and a wrecker truck all covered in algae oh my gosh that's brilliant I love a Rover P5B this is so different to the look of the Ionic 5. This is more actually akin to the Ionic 
Remember, there was an Ionic before the Ionic 5, aka the wind knife, which I have mentioned before in, in previous features. And one of the, the cult following uh, reasons for that car is because the wind knife is so efficient. It's so aerodynamically efficient. You can get the most out of every kilowatt hour. And there's a certain person that drives an EV and lives with an EV that just cares about efficiency. And if you care about efficiency, the Ionic 6, I suspect, is for you. There's an Ionic, there's an original Ionic. That's the wind knife. This is a lower slung car. So I guess the cabin probably felt initially a little bit more cramped. I don't think it is more cramped or it's certainly not at the front. But what I've noticed is because the car is more low slung and I want to sit more in it, you know, I want to kind of slip down in rather than sit on, I can't get the seat low enough because it doesn't go low enough for me. And I'm a tall guy. I tend to want to sit as low as possible in a car. So for you, it might not be a problem. But it's something I've definitely felt like I wanted to be a little lower in it. Tons of arm space though, because these door these door cards are carved right out. They've really made the most of the space. And there's a, there's a big ridge, you know, a door handle that goes all the way along. But not only that, what I've noticed today is that here are, are the electric windows. It's just like the Suzuki Jimny. They decided to make the door cards thinner for more elbow room and more space. So they brought the electric windows inboard. And that's exactly what they've done this with the Ionic 6. See, I really like the damping of this car. It feels more EV6 than Ionic 5. But it feels to me like if I was blindfolded as a passenger, I feel like this would be, it's like being in a Jaguar or something like that. And Jags have always had extremely good damping, good settings on their chassis. Now, this is the part of the Ionic 6 that I was a bit worried about. You see, you've got this amazing swoopy roof line, this streamlined roof line. Looks like it's had a roof chop. But does that mean that real adults can't enjoy the back end? Let's see. I'm sat behind myself, I'm six foot three. These seats have got an amazing amount of sculpted out area here. This is hard. I've got loads of knee room behind myself, as it were, which is really good. Got a, got a net here, flat floor car, because of course this is a ground up new EV. Um, and actually my headroom's not too bad either. But crucially, this is something I hadn't quite worked out when I sat in the front, was the waistline of the um, Ionic 6 is quite low. So although it's a squashed down sleek car, they haven't made the door line really high, which has been a fashion in car design for years. So as a kid sitting here, you'll be able to easily see out. They don't feel like they're just staring at, you know, a door panel, which makes some kids feel motion sick. One of my kids gets really motion sick. Um, and the other thing I love, I don't know if you can see it here, but where the speaker is, this Bose speaker, there's also like a little cubby hole for like your mobile phone or something. But yet there's another cubby down there for like a drink. And then the, the door handle as well is like a full length thing. They've made a real feature of the door handle and this sort of corrugated material here, which I guess the mood lighting shines off. It's just, it's a different thought process. This car's very kind of, it doesn't follow convention. You would never know this car is related to the Ionic 5, unless you notice the H on the bonnet, of which this has the new recessed flat um, H. But of course the steering wheel doesn't have Hyundai. So you, you sit in the cabin there and you just, you just have no idea what car you're driving. It's, it's kind of good. I like it. The other thing is, these belts, apparently they flap around and they can graze on this uh, plastic covering if they turn the wrong way, there is a piece of padding here. So what Hyundai have done, or Hyundai, just simply made a hole so that you can stick your unused seatbelt in there and it doesn't move around. It's the sort of thing that Skoda would do. Practical, you see, practical is sexy sometimes. It really is. Like I said in the front here, you've got buttons on the passenger seat. So if I want to, I can just move this away from me like that. That's the sort of thing in the past you had on long wheelbase, very executive saloons like Merck S-Classes and Lexus, big Lexuses. You got it on this. It's cool, isn't it? Active sound design. 
enhanced, normal and minimized. So you don't have to put it in sport mode for the, the sort of noise to change. I'm in a 30 limit, so I can't give it a squirt at the moment, but it's quite vocal that. Normal's just a couple of notches lower and minimized, I guess is like being in the next room to where you're playing the music. What do you think of this noise, the synthesized noises on EVs? Do you like having them in the car? Do you want them to just not be there? Which you could, of course, can you just stop? Do you think it's pointless? Should we just enjoy the silence? In the words of Depeche Mode, I think we should. I don't know, it's a bit like being followed by someone with a really weird accordion. No, I'm not having that. I'm not having that. So Hyundai could have easily, or Hyundai, Hyundai, they could have easily done a sort of BMW. BMW have re released the i4, which looks like a sort of smoothed over 3 Series, doesn't it? And it's a fine electric car. But they wanted to make more of a statement, so they've clothed it completely differently to anything in the range. To the point where you don't even know it's a Hyundai until you see the badge. Slightly froggy front end of the Ionic 6, which I think will probably date quicker than the rest of it, and I might be wrong. Let me know in the comments. Uh, pixelation daytime running lights here, active aero flaps here, these open uh, in order to let more air into the battery packs to cool them down or for the HVAC system. Uh, and these couple of sort of two creases here, one that goes over the top of the, the wheel arch and then one that goes down the, the bonnet into this and around the base of the, the headlights. I mean, it's such an interesting car, isn't it? It couldn't be more different to the Ionic 5. They could have easily just made a Russian doll and gone, we'll just make a smaller Ionic 5 or we'll just make a bigger Ionic 5. But they, Hyundai have gone, no, 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 we'll just make it completely different. And this car doesn't sit above, remember, the Ionic 5. It sits just alongside it. It's just an alternative. Cool. They're like a sort of pioneering fashion house, but yet beneath it all, it's still very practical. Still an everyday usable car. Where the Ionic 6 really triumphs over the 5 is your range and your efficiency. I mean, Hyundai quote an average of about 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour, which is brilliant. Um, and if it gets anything near that in the real world, I mean, today it's very cold, but that's impressive. And of course, the, the range, the WLTP range is over 380 miles. So it's a good like 60, nearly 70 miles more than the Ionic 5 with the same battery pack, and the, uh, you know, same drivetrain. That's big news. That's what happens when you have this slippery design with 0.21 coefficient. I mean, it is amazing. The more I look at it out in the real world, and I don't know if this is going to be the same for other people, the more I'm wondering whether the Ionic 5 will stay radical and if this will start to tire quicker. I'm not tired of the Ionic 5. To look at, it's still a DeLorean to me. It still reeks of the future with that little smidge of retro. Steering's better in this than the, uh, the Ionic 5. It's firmer. I'm sure it's firmer. I haven't fiddled with the drive modes yet. There's that knob on the steering wheel here where you can change from your different modes. But it definitely feels more of a driver's car. So in essence, when I've reviewed the, the Ionic 5 versus the Kia EV6 in the past, really what I've said is the EV6 is more of a driver's car. The Ionic 5 is more practical in terms of boot space, slightly more passenger space. So you pay your money, you make your choice. Okay, boot. You press this button here with the pixels on. Motorized boot lid like so many of them. All our camera gear is in here because we've been filming today. If you want to know what the boot looks like with nothing in it, in all of its bare carpeted glory, here's a shot. Okay, you're back in the room. It's 401 litres versus the Ionic 5's 527 litres. So the Ionic 5 is a taller boot, obviously, because it's a hatchback. But although this is smaller, it's still quite practical. Shallow, but it's deep, seriously deep, just like the Porsche Taycan saloon is. So you can fit lots in it, but it could be a deal breaker for you because it's not a hatchback. Yeah, there we go. I don't like motorized boot lids. Frunk slash fruit. 
So remember, the boot's smaller than an Ionic 5, uh, and the front end, it's not going to embarrass any Teslas in a hurry with its space here. But this space depends on whether you go for a rear motor only, or whether you go for all-wheel drive. This car is the rear motor only, which means it has 45 litres of storage space in this sort of rubberized little compartment. You get 12 litres if it's all-wheel drive, which is almost useless, apart from a pair of ballet shoes. He pays your money, you make your choice. I'd always go for rear wheel drive with winter tires if the weather gets a bit naughty. Just me. The rear wheel drive entry level car comes in at under two tons, which I'm not gonna say is amazing, but in a world now where a lot of EVs with long range batteries are over two tons, that's not a bad thing. If you're looking at one of these and thinking of buying one, what else would you consider? Well, you could consider, I suppose, the the Kia EV6 but the Tesla Model 3 is a natural rival I would say and it's a saloon the Polestar 2 that's a sort of saloony hatchy thing um, and the BMW i4 perhaps and the Mercedes EQE they're all a kind of swoopy saloon aren't they really you know the Koreans are making it very difficult to they're making it very difficult for other manufacturers because they deliver such a decent product that will suit so many people. I'd be really surprised if somebody drives one of these or an EV6 or a, an Ionic 5 and isn't impressed. Now, I think Kia win when it comes to the e Nero versus the Kona. I like the e Nero better than the, the Kona in its current guise. EV6 is a better driver's car than an Ionic 5. And this, I think, is probably a better driver's car. Well, it's on par with the EV6. The Ionic 5 is a softer car. If you want to be a bit more engaged, you're a bit more interested in driving dynamics, choose this over the Ionic 5, unless you value the boot space and the higher roof line a bit more. Oh shit, I forgot to mention two other really important things for rear passengers, possible clinchers. Ionic 6 comes as standard with heated rear seats. Two stage, just here on the door. Brilliant. Secondly, down here is the now kind of like hallmark Kia Hyundai feature. It has a three pin household plug right down there. Because remember, this has vehicle to load, V2L, which means you can power stuff off the car if you want to. This is brilliant. Those two things, totally forgot to mention them. What am I thinking? I was getting too comfortable. Even on a cold day, doing, you know, fast driving, slow driving, fast driving, slow driving, still gets 3.3, 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. The efficiency of Korean batteries, I think, is just superb. There's that Bing again, reminding you you're coming into a different speed limit. And you can't change that. It's mandatory, which rhymes with banditry. You can't buy the Ionic 6 in the UK at least on any other wheel size apart from 20s because they don't think that you'll want to. Whereas the Ionic 5, you can order it on 19s and 20s, 18s in other countries. What do we think of the wheel design? It's so much flatter. It's so much flatter than the Ionic 5. And the steering's got a lot more communication in it to me. It's firmer. Damn, it's a good car. But what annoys me about this is I still, I think I prefer the Ionic 5 to look at still. But this is a better driver's car. And I, I, want, I want the chassis of this, the chassis settings, the damping on an, under an Ionic 5. I'm really pleased that Hyundai, Hyundai, whatever, has made the Ionic 5 and then this, the Ionic 6, neither of which are SUVs and yet neither of which are kind of better than one another or more expensive one another. They're, the, they're like, if you've got the same budget and you want to do the same sort of jobs, but you just choose one or the other and that's kind of what it is. How fascinating, how refreshing. Which one's better? I think they're just different. This car is a better driver's car than the Ionic 5. This is a more supple, firmer ride. The steering's just that little bit more in tune with a driver. It just feels a little bit more together. But 
I love the Ionic 5. I think if the Ionic 5 had these dampers, or you bought the Ionic 5 and put slightly different dampers and slightly firmer dampers on it, it would just be, for me, perfect. But both of them showcase this. They showcase that I believe Hyundai and Kia are still the ones to beat when it comes to electric cars that are not only bold, stylish and interesting, but also very, very practical in many ways. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Maybe you've ordered an Ionic 6, or maybe you're one of the people that have contacted me recently and said, I already have a 5 and I'm thinking of changing it for a 6. What do you now think? Thanks very much for watching this episode of The Late Break Show. This particular episode is sponsored proudly by blackcircles.com. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. And maybe you want to support us via Patreon. I will put a link for that in the description below. And typically, you get to see videos like this early and you get several blogs a week from yours truly. Thank you.